Hello everyone, welcome to this course. I am Alex Sears and today we're going to be talking about using Redux with React. So first of all, you might be wondering, well, what exactly is Redux? Well, Redux is a predictable state container for JavaScript applications. What does that actually mean? Well, what it means is that we create this store that we can put all of our state into. Then we can subscribe to changes on the state and whenever we dispatch a change to the state, it will then tell us about the change and whoever is listening for it can then update themselves accordingly. So let's first go through some definitions just so we all are on the same page. First of all, we have the state and that's going to be the place where we keep all of our data. It's one central location where everything is kept. We don't have to worry about being in multiple places and worrying about pulling it from different areas. We put everything in one area and then we can pull it all out when we need it. An action is a change that is sent to the state. So we essentially say, hey, this thing has happened. Here is the data that could go along with the action, but not all actions have data. For example, if you were toggling a piece of data. So if you had a Boolean in your state and you're saying it's currently false, we could send an action that says to toggle it, which would then send it to true. But we can also send actions that have pieces of data, such as we want to put all our users in our store. So we would say set user, that's the action, and then we would pass the users in. A reducer is a JavaScript function that gets the state and also gets the current action and then returns the new piece of state, which is then combined all into the big piece of state in our store. We can have only one reducer in our application and it handles all of our state, but for most applications, you will have many reducers and you'll see when we get into it, there's a very easy way to combine a bunch of reducers all into one big reducer, which is then kept and managed in our store. A view is very simple. It's just whatever you see on the screen. So if you're thinking in terms of React, it's whatever comes out of the render method of a component. That is a particular view. We also have dispatch, and dispatch is essentially the function that we use to send actions to the state. So you'll hear me say, oh, we're going to dispatch an action, and that simply means, hey, we're gonna send this action with some data possibly to our state, and then the store processes it through our reducers and that's what creates the new piece of state. And lastly, we have subscribe and it's exactly what it sounds like. Whenever there are actions dispatched to the store, we can then subscribe to changes. So then when a piece of data changes, we'll get state again and then we can re-render our view based on that new piece of state. So how does it actually work? Well, first thing we need to do is we need to subscribe to a piece of the state. We'll have our view and we'll say, hey, we're going to be listening for these pieces of data and anytime they change, let me know. And then we need to cause an action. So this action could be caused by an Ajax request coming back. It could be caused by something on a WebSocket. It could be caused by a button being clicked. It could be caused by anything that can happen on a web page. Anything can cause an action and it's our job to make sure that when those things happen, we dispatch the correct action with the correct piece of data to our state. And I already kind of touched on this, but that's what we do. When we cause an action, we dispatch the action. And then we run the reducers. So when the store sees a new action, it passes the current state and the action, the current action passes that to all the reducers. And it's up to the reducers to know whether it needs to do something with that action or whether it needs to ignore it and then return just its current state that it was just given. Once it's actually done, and once all the reducers are done, the store combines them back together into our state, our one big giant state, and then that is passed to all the subscribers. And that's what I was just saying. It passes it to all the subscribers, which in this case would be our views, and then our views would accordingly update based on the pieces of state that that view uh, cares about. Now this can be a real pain to set up in a React application because we have to subscribe to everything and then make sure that we're using set state to change things in our component and it in a large application would get 
very hard to manage. But luckily, just like everything in the JavaScript community, there's a package for that, and it's called React Redux. React Redux exposes a provider component that we can put our whole application inside. We give this provider the store that we've created, which we'll see how to do that. It's very simple. And then that provider makes sure to pass it down uh, through all the components that are connected. So it makes working with it very, very easy in React. So all right, what are we going to build? Well, today we're just going to build a simple application using the Star Wars API. Um, we're just going to be pulling a list of characters, and anytime we click on the characters, we're going to be getting more data from them from the API based on the character we clicked on, and then displaying some of that data. So this is just very simply what it looks like. So what technology are we going to be using? Well, of course, we're going to be using React and React DOM. We will be using Redux and therefore React Redux. We're also going to be using a middleware called Redux Thunk. And I'll explain that a little bit more, but essentially a middleware sits between our application and our store. So then what Redux Thunk does is it allows us to, instead of returning an actual action object, we can instead return a function. That function will be passed the dispatch function. This means that we'll be able to do asynchronous sort of work, which in this application we'll be doing a decent amount. If you're confused right now, I promise everything will be clear very soon. We're going to be using Webpack as our module loader and therefore a Webpack dev server to set up our development environment. And then we'll be using Babel to help us transpile our ES 2015 or ES star code into ES5 uh, that is compatible with pretty much all browsers nowadays. This will let us use a lot of the newer ES 2015 and 16 syntax, which I will be using quite a bit of but I will explain things as I go along and you'll pick it up very quickly. So let's just demo the application real quick. When we refresh the page, the characters are pulled in. Uh, we're just grabbing the first 10 characters. If we wanted, we could paginate this, but for this simple application, I just didn't do that. We could click on Darth Vader. His profile is populated. And then it also gets the world and all the movies that he's in. And so anytime we select a new character, it will go get the new data and it will update it accordingly. So now that we have all that set up, let's set up our dev environment. 